Coach Taylor Jenkins has led his group to a 20-2 record without John Morant. It's the highest win percentage for a team without their 25-plus per game score in NBA history. The next three teams with the highest percentage all won the title. Upsetting the fully healthy reigning Western Conference champions, the Grizz weren't only missing Ja, but five top contributors in total, yet still dominated Phoenix in the final quarter of play. You're about to see why the Grizzlies are one of the deepest teams in the NBA, and every detail on how they flipped a switch down the stretch, upsetting the number one team in the league. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, 90.6% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The Toronto-born Dylan Brooks has been limited to 30 games this season, with long absences for both a hamstring and ankle injury. However, since getting healthy, the 6'7", 225-pound wing has been the elite pick-and-roll shot creator which fans in Tennessee had gotten accustomed to in years past. Despite missing around three-quarters of this 21-22 campaign, Dylan's putting up averages of nearly 19 points and three assists per night. You can't forget that five and a half years ago, Memphis general manager at the time in Chris Wallace snagged Brooks extremely deep in 2017's draft, taking the Oregon Duck in the second round down at pick number 45 overall that year. 2021's first round playoff series against Utah saw the Canadian average 26 points, one and a half steals on 53% shooting from the field and 43% shooting from distance, which putting things into perspective makes Dylan Brooks an absolute draft robbery for Memphis. And Friday night in the 901 saw Brooks continue to cement himself as both a Grizzlies fan favorite and one of the current number two seed in the Western Conference's best players. Dylan converted a three point play with 32 seconds left for an eight point lead, and the shorthanded Grizzlies held on to snap the Suns' nine game winning streak. Brooks finished with a dominant 30 piece on the game overall. The 10th overall pick in 2021's draft, Zaire Williams, scored 19 points for Memphis and the 3 and D forward out of the University of South Carolina in DeAnthony Melton added a crucial 17 points, including six straight free throws in the final 20 seconds. From there, the backdoor cutting and three-point sniping of John Conchar, offensive rebounding and screen setting of Xavier Tillman, Santi Aldama's reverse dunk, and the glue guy Brandon Clark's passing and in-between game fulfilled Memphis's next-man-up mentality. Those four players shocked Phoenix by combining for 50 points, this W for Memphis didn't merely come without the face of their franchise in John Morant, who's missed the last seven games with a sore right knee, but Coach Jenkins was also without the services of Desmond Bain, Steven Adams, Tyus Jones, and not to mention a DPOY candidate, along with a top scoring option in Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. On the other side for Phoenix, Devin Booker continued his hot streak with 41, Mikhail Bridges added 18, and Cameron Payne finished with 11 points. While Memphis practically rested every one of their top players, the Suns came with their full complement of starters and bench options. But that didn't stop Memphis from blitzing the fully healthy number one seed with a shockingly merciless 17-2 run at the start of the fourth quarter. As the well-coached group turned up the pressure in the fourth, holding Phoenix to four points in the first 528 of the final frame and taking a dominant 101-87 lead. Taylor Jenkins said postgame, quote, these are definitely culture wins because you're going up against the best team in the league. Tonight's a night where you can put your stamp on it and say, this is who we are and we're going to be here for a really long time. Meanwhile, Suns coach Monty Williams had this to say post-game. They outplayed us. That was the key to the game. Their approach and our approach were two totally different zip codes. Monty's the current favorite to win the Coach of the Year award. And while he deserves that for leading Phoenix to a 62-win season thus far, Conversely, with how coach Taylor Jenkins has managed the second seed in the West, while also dealing with his best player missing a big chunk of games, and many other top players being out for a while, I think he should be considered a top candidate as well. And after beating Monty's fully healthy team, and owning the next best record in the NBA behind the reigning West champs, the coach of the year narrative could be shifting in the favor of Taylor Jenkins. GM Zach Kleinman deserves a ton of credit for acquiring the right pieces, but with how any rotation player can jump in and contribute to winning basketball, that's a testament to player 1 through 15 buying into the coach's message and offensive system. There's a well-talked about level of trust and continuity 
both on and off the court. That's incredibly hard to come by in this league for the Memphis Grizzlies. What isn't talked about enough with this team is the man not only implementing the culture and keeping the Memphis locker room in check, but drawing up fluid, unpredictable play sets, managing egos and setting a clear role for every single player on the roster, not just the top five to 10 guys, is something you rarely see from coaches nowadays, but Jenkins does that. Overall expectations for the Grizzlies weren't high at all this year, at least on a national level. Vegas set their over-under win total at 41 and a half games. Last night was their 55th win of the season with four games remaining on the schedule. Most fans expected Memphis to be right back in the middle of the play-in picture. The lowest of expectations had the Grizz slipping out of the play-in, finishing as the number 11 seed. Even the highest of expectations had the Grizzlies narrowly avoiding the play-in as a six seed. Memphis is one of the youngest teams in the NBA. Steven Adams and Kyle Anderson are the old guys at just 28 years old. At age 37, Taylor Jenkins would fit right in as a player on the LA Lakers roster. Consistency is tough for young teams who usually play up or down to their competition. It's an issue the Grizzlies had a fair bit last season, but this year, they've handled their business a majority of the time. The consistency starts with coaching, especially during an unprecedented season. Grizzlies players continuously praise Taylor Jenkins for helping build their confidence when out there on the court. After becoming the new franchise leader in threes made for a single season, Desmond Bain credited Jenkins for, quote, giving us all the confidence to be aggressive, to continue to let it fly, make or miss. This comes after the players joked about Jenkins, quote, let that MF fly slogan earlier in the year. Jaron Jackson Jr. debuted his rap album, Suddenly, and mentions Taylor Jenkins in his song, Wavy, with the line, shout out to T. Jenks, I let it fly. The entire Grizzlies roster is outspoken about a lot of things, and praising Taylor Jenkins is something that consistently comes up in media availability and on social media. Taylor's also done an excellent job at bouncing back when his team hits a rough patch. The Grizzlies' longest losing streak this year has been just three games. They lost three straight in November and another three-game losing streak in late November. Memphis hasn't even really lost back-to-back -back games since that stretch in late December. The only two-game losing streak the Grizzlies have had since then was at the All-Star break, where they fell to Portland in the final game before the break, and then to Minnesota in the first game back. Jenkins has the ability to rally the team and help them put things in the rearview mirror, which has been critical to the team's success for years now and has been noticeable for quite some time. But I really want to know your take in the comments section. Why or why not is Taylor Jenkins the 2022 Coach of the Year? Best answer down below. Gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st. Receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Thierry, who says, I think the Raptors 2022 ceiling is the Eastern Conference Finals. Appreciate every answer. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.